Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and the new edition of our online interview series. And it's my pleasure and honor to yeah, get now an update directly from Beaver Creek from the Precious Metal Summit of Condor Gold. And uh, Mark Child, the CEO, is here with us. Good morning to America. How are you? Yes, good morning. Very well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, great to have you here. Thanks for uh, getting up that early. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, Condor Gold, uh, we have spoken a lot of times in the past, and I think you still you are. You guys have a great company. You have put together really a great project. And yeah, it looks to me now like you have produced the real final document, the feasibility study for the La India Open Pit. So that would, means to me like you guys are ready for takeoff. Yes, it's a, it's a major uh, milestone for us to actually produce uh, a, a feasibility study. And some of the retail people in London call it the bankable feasibility study. Mm -hmm. um, in Canada, it's a feasibility study. But it, it, it's a major de-risk for the project. Um, and it's uh, taken us 18 months to do. Um, so we're delighted that it's out. Uh, Mm -hmm. And you guys uh, did it for the La India Open Pit only. And uh, as I understand, um, yeah, it makes it a bit easier, let's put it that way, to put everything together to get started, right? Yes, we, we want to develop the project in two phases and uh, to come up with a, uh, a minimum sort of capex number to get into production. So the feasibility study is on land open pit only, as you say. The reserve that we produced on that um, is about six point. Uh, 7.6 million tons at 2.6 grams for 600,000 ounces of gold. And that'll produce out of the reserve, out of a single pit, 82,000 ounces of gold per annum on average uh, for six mm -hmm. years, with year two actually going up to about 95,000 ounces out of that reserve case. Mm -hmm. Which would be great because if if we go to, let's say, like a debt finance uh, scenario, and as majority, I would call it, you can easily pay back uh, most of the debt in the first two years, right? That, that that's correct and so if, if you look at the project economics on the announcement mm -hmm. that i put out it just highlighted that the gross margin on this and that have been uh, at some revenues that say 1600 gold uh, mm -hmm. and then our operating costs so the gross margin is about 46 percent. so the numbers on 1600 gold after sustaining capital after royalties uh mm -hmm. we we have about 350 million dollars worth of gross margin so if you looked at 60, 70 million of debt, you've got a coverage there uh, of of six times. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you look at if you looked at uh, uh, $2,000 gold, just as, as an example, which we were earlier this year, you're about you know, over five, $560 million worth of uh, uh, cash flow, if you like, uh, mm -hmm. after sustaining capital and royalty. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the debt coverage is easily covered out of the, just the single pit, which was the objective because we've got two additional permitted feeder pits to add in, uh, which we showed in the PEAs, as you alluded to, to earlier. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So what would be then, let's call it a, um, or let's, what, what would be the capex to build this first phase? What, what have you had in your feasibility study now? Uh, we, the total upfront capital cost mm -hmm. uh, is 106 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. And that includes a 15% contingency. It includes uh, an EPCM contract, engineering procurement construction manager for someone else to build it, a specialist mm -hmm. firm. Uh, it includes pre-stripping of about 5 million tons. Uh, and so that's a really manageable by its size. And all those costs, Joachim, are, are at the 31st of July. So we repriced mm -hmm. everything uh, mm -hmm. at inflation highs, if you like. So people say, oh, well, are you going to have a CapEx blowout? No, we shouldn't, uh, because it's reflective of, of current prices. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Current prices. So you have factored those high inflation numbers already in. And I'm in, I mean, even some numbers came down, like I think iron ore came down uh, since truly oil is a little bit cheaper. So probably this is a real, re real realistic number, I would call it. What um, is the life of mine AISC approximately? Uh, it, it's uh, yes, it's one thousand and forty dollars an ounce AISC. But that, that'll come down when we add feeder pits in. So when, when you do an F, a feasibility study, you've got all the processing plant designs, 50% engineered. Uh, and uh, the tailing storage facility, we spent $1.2 million uh, uh, fully engineering and designing that, including 26 different geotechnical drill holes. Mm -hmm. the, the, these remain unchanged 
or when they're built, if you like, within that CAPEX number. To, when you add feeder pits in from anywhere else, it doesn't matter that we have another, uh, on the Steezer, for example, we've got 120,000 ounces resource out over eight grams and the, the, the head grade will be five. So mm -hmm. uh, that in reality, what, have, what we're demonstrating is just that single pit is sufficient to pay the debt coverage, say six times. But if, when this really goes into production, as you go in the construction phase, you'll add those feeder pits in and comfortably pop it over the 100,000 ounces of gold per annum and, and increase gold ounces and margins as a result of putting high grade through it. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I mean, when you start production and you make money, you uh, restart also aggressive drilling, I could imagine. That's, well, there's certainly enough cash flow to do that. And yeah. we've got so many targets. We've been saying for some time we've got... Uh, 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 we, 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 we've got an additional 5 million ounces. We have about 2.4 million now. Uh, and just going back to the PEA, uh, just to remind the readers, we, in October last year, we came out with a PEA with the underground in, and that was 150,000 ounces of gold per annum for nine years and a 12 month payback and IRRs of 54%. Well, the resource hasn't changed since then. Mm -hmm. So uh, even it's though we've done drilling, it's still there. <laughs> it, it's just that we we haven't we haven't drilled out the underground to the tight mm -hmm. drill spacing needed for a bankable feasibility study. But that can be done out of cash flow, uh, or it, you know, so, 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 but it's it, we think it's a realistic target to get to the 150 mm -hmm. quite quickly. Mm -hmm, super. Um, as I saw also in your reserves, uh, you have uh, 1.25 million ounces of silver. Would you use that, let's say, for a stream, for example, or would you use that selling forward to get that thing financed? Does that it's, make sense? It's, it's, or it's, it's too small. It is, it, it's quite small, but it's some. There are a lot. There's a lot of money in the in, in the streaming business at the moment, and exactly. some junior some junior streaming yeah. companies who 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 would definitely look at that. So that's an option for financing the upfront capital capital cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super. No, because I could uh, imagine that it would that this might bring down in addition the equity component. Exactly. And I think that you're, you're looking at the way this gets financed, I think, will be a, a private equity debt. And it'll be gold loans that, that, that now that you've got a feasibility study and you can, mm -hmm. you know, you'll repay it in the old fashioned way of physical gold that people want. Mm -hmm. um, plenty of people want that. Uh, and then there's regional development banks uh, mm -hmm. uh, that because Nicaragua is a, a poor country. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who, who are happy to sort of lend in. So, uh, and we have uh, discussions uh, with all those parties. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, why was the feasibility study delayed? Because I remember when we were talking uh, also in the beginning of the year, I had a bit the impression it goes a little bit faster. Um, but what, what were the reasons finally? Uh, yes, I'm happy to discuss that. The, we, we needed to re do or do a lot more additional metallurgical test work. Uh, we used a different lab than we'd used before, uh, and the results came back questionable. Uh, and they, they'd used a, a lower, they'd used point, uh, sorry, 85% metallurgical recovery on the lower grade. Uh, we didn't want to accept that because previously we've had 91% uh, recovery. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. took it back to the lab we've used for, 10 year, for 12 years, Bureau of Veritas in Vancouver, we redid all the metallurgy. And that, that requires sort of picking all the core, sending out a few tons up to Vancouver, sits in the lab for another few months. And they came back and said, it's in the lab, it's 93% metallurgical recovery on everything. And, and where they tested the lower grade, it's not 85%, it was 93%. So we did it very comprehensively. And the metallurgy means, uh, it. Well, the great thing on this deposit is that independent of grade, you get the same metallurgical recovery. It doesn't matter whether it's five grams or one gram, you get 93% in the labs at uh, 75 microns. The upside is if you grind to a finer grind size, you can get to 53 microns. So you can get an extra 2% metallurgical recovery uh, mm -hmm. possibly on this. So, But in the economic models, we put in 91%, and that's just a 2% deduction by SRK during the feasibility study to mm -hmm. be conservative. So, But in reality, we, we want to be clawing of that back you can imagine if you if you do a hundred thousand ounces of gold a year at uh, 1700 gold is 170 million dollars you're not going to leave two percent in there as a precaution <laughs> you're going to get mm -hmm. it do whatever you can to get that extra 34 million dollars out so oh. i i think this will this will uh, uh so so a major reason was the metallurgy the second reason was the capex we we mm -hmm. looked at the capex we had a higher number I sat out with uh, in Tucson, Arizona, going through this with the engineers, and we stripped back what we could to to mm -hmm. basically get started in stage one, 
And so we have a really realistic CapEx number. Uh, but that took time to, to, to go through it. Okay, super. Yeah, then uh, last question, most important question. What is the game plan now to really get that thing into production? What are your next steps and uh, how fast Yeah, can you do that? Uh, we've we've uh, got a, with the EPCM contractors. We've had uh, timetables come through, which will be detailed in the FS when it's uh, filed on CDAR. And there's an 18 month construction period for this. Uh, they say it could be done in 12, uh, mm -hmm. but because we've got the segment already there. But we're we're putting 18 months in. So really, from construction financing, we're we're saying 18 months is a construction period for that mill we've purchased, uh, mm -hmm. 2,600 tons a day. Uh, and I think that people want to see the project into construction. Mm -hmm. into production yeah. i should say yeah. yeah exactly exactly yeah but how do you do it now with the financing do you have already uh, let's say concrete ideas uh, are you talking already to parties well uh, i had three meetings yesterday at precious uh, of my meetings yesterday three of them were with with uh, lenders i mean there are a lot of people here looking to earn fees and of course once you have a feasibility study out which is plus or minus 10 to 15 percent mm. of the capital cost and 10 to 15 percent of operating costs that's a super high degree of certainty it's not a pfs it's not a pa exactly. that's the time when a whole lot more uh, people say oh we lend to you at this stage so the big mm. private equity firms uh, start mm. to knock on the door because there aren't many you know the people want these kind of projects and they've got to earn mm. their living and fees so part of the, these conferences is, is networking amongst those, yeah. those providers and there's no shortage of people and gold being where it is uh the, uh, the geopolitical risk for people are that they're happy to secure it on the assets on a deposit at this mm, level absolutely. of certainty yeah absolutely and as we are both gold bulls and we see also the trend is uh, switching and there might be also a new cycle next year starting as we discussed before that interview 2015 was to reload at 1050 and now it looks like eight if we go seven to eight years uh, later the new cycle might start so you guys probably in the right time point of doing that yes i, I believe so and it's a fully yeah. diverse project we've uh, there aren't many projects out there that We've got feasibility studies out, are fully permitted mm. to construct and to operate, can add in feeder pits and add in underground and increase that production number by, by 50 to 100%. So uh, I think we're in a very good space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Super. You're in a great space in a great shape, I would say. Mark, thank you very much for the update. Uh, I keep fingers crossed. Uh, please have more good meetings because we want to see La India going in production, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Super. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Mark Child, the CEO of Condor Gold. You heard it. The feasibility study is out finally for the La India open pit only, plus also feeder pits. And it looks really fantastic. The numbers are fantastic. And as Mark alluded to, uh, the money is out there. So they have the feasibility. They have all the permits. Don't forget that, please. They have bought all the land. And the share price, honestly, is a joke compared to what they have and to the quality of the company. So time to look at Condor Golds. I'm a shareholder of the company and I will buy definitely some more because I love what I see and you should maybe do also. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.